And today my informative topic is on sleep paralysis. Don't mind this yet, this is just another day. But um, I'm gonna start with a story, a personal experience that I've had with sleep paralysis. I think it was probably one of the scariest moments I had in my life. I was asleep and I had a sleep paralysis experience and when I thought I was awake, I seen something in the corner of my door and it was like a dark black figure and it was just swaying and it scared the crap out of me. And I think that was like the worst time I ever had it. I eventually woke up, but it gets really bad. I'll go into further detail about what exactly it is, but I'm gonna talk to you <coughs> about the history, the medical terminology. I'm gonna give you self-knowledge, um, different cultures on sleep paralysis. Um, I'm gonna give you causes and treating. First, I'm gonna start by telling you that it's a chronic sleeping condition and it happens in four to 10 people of all ages. It does not discriminate. Um, the history of it, let's start with that. This guy right here, his name is Samuel Johnson and he was the first person to give it a definition he called it the nightmare and eventually it evolved into sleep paralysis. This is Van is Brand Van de Meer. He's a Dutch physician. He was um, actually the first person to discover what it was. He uh, did a sleep study on it with a woman that said she had it and he wrote a whole bunch of stuff on it. He wrote articles and books and whatnot on it. That was the early 1600s. It just wasn't a credit for. This guy's name is Cialis Weir Mitchell and he was the first physician to be accredited for it. He also did a sleep study, the same type of sleep study that the Dutch physician did, but this was the first one to be accredited for. Next point, different cultures. There's many, the two most popular cultures is Japan and Canada culture. Japan, in Japan they call it Kashibari, and it's basically an iron, they call it, kashibari means um, like an iron rod holding you down from you getting up. And in Newfoundland, Canada, they call it the old hag. And the reasoning of calling it that is because they think it happens because when you work too hard, your body's tired, which is kind of getting into the medical terminology of it. but. They call it old hag, and if you're from the islands, they call it the kokma. Um, so it's obviously universal. A lot of cultures experience it. Religious purposes. I'm just going to get into the two main religions that we have in the USA, and that's uh, Christianity and Islam. Uh, Christianity believes that it's a demon attached in the middle of the night, and Islam, they call it jinx attack, but jinx attack is like different types of um, like spiritual stuff or whatever. So uh, This is actually a famous painting by Henry Lucille. He's a French artist and in the 1700s he painted this and it's one of the most popular paintings that we have of this sleep paralysis ordeal. Getting into the medical terminology of it, um, there's, it's basically called hyper, I wrote it down because it's very hard to pronounce, hypno, hy, hypnogenic, and it happens, hypnogenic and <coughs> hypen, hypnoponic. Hypnogenic basically is like hallucination and it happens while you're falling into sleep and on the midst of you falling into a sleep. So like, Basically, this is when you're asleep. Hypnogenic is over here, and that happens when you're falling asleep. And hypnoponymic is when you're waking up from falling asleep. So it can happen in two of those categories. And then rapid eye movement that happens like the whole time you're asleep. So I think 75% of the time that you're asleep, you're experiencing rapid eye movement. But uh, basically, sleep paralysis, medical terminology of it is when your mind and your body aren't 
thinking the same one minute and they're not on the same page. And um, one of them wakes up and it's usually your mind, so it causes your muscles to still be asleep. That's kind of what it's But um, it happens usually when you don't get a good night rest and your sleep hygiene's off, if you're stressed out, too much caffeine, substance abuse, if you're on medication, you can get it diagnosed by your doctor, but it's so common that you just have to find a good sleep regimen for you. And to wrap everything up, sleep well, eat well. Um, it's very common, four in 10 people. If you have any questions, ask me, because I'm a professional, it happens to me. But that's it. All right.